Competing in combat sports is one of the most vulnerable experiences in professional athletics. Imagine honing your wartime abilities in the grueling and oftentimes humbling training sessions necessary to build your skills and fitness to an acceptable level. Then imagine stripping half naked and facing off against another person equally trained only to suffer a swift KO that you are not to mention are busted up from in the following days and weeks. All in front of a captive audience watching, drunkenly cheering or booing and demanding to be entertained. A ton of embarrassing things can happen as the athletes expose themselves physically, mentally and emotionally to the task at hand. Today we'll look at the fighters who did something above and beyond to earn their spot on this list. I'm Tom from MMA On Point and here are 10 incredibly embarrassing moments in MMA. Number 10, Darian Caldwell, Bellator 143. Fighters climb in the cage is so commonplace that we expect it to happen at least once in pretty much any mixed martial arts event. The winning fighter hops on top of the cage, revels in victory and the show goes on. Most people don't realize that it is against the unified rules as the officials usually just look the other way and rarely raise a fuss when it happens. However, a whole lot can go wrong. So if you're going to celebrate on the cage, just be careful. At Bellator 143, Darian Caldwell learned this lesson the hard way after defeating Sean Bunch by rear naked choke in the first round. Caldwell stood on top of the fence and launched himself into a backflip. Sounds cool until he landed on the camera woman who entered the cage to film the immediate aftermath of the win. In what was both the absolute best and absolute worst timing imaginable, Coldwell did knock the camera woman over but managed to help her catch the ultimate in-cage POV shot. Fortunately, there were no serious injuries as a result and Bellator took to social media to ensure that everyone was okay as Coldwell was shown apologizing and checking up on his unwitting landing pad. Number nine, Claudine Angelo, Jungle Fight 13. Claudine Angelo has been hard at work fighting in the regional scene of Brazil since 2005. With a near 50-50 record at the time, Angelo's career would largely fly under the radar. That was until his 2013 bout against Ivalasso Silva at Jungle Fight 13. Shortly into the opening round, Silva would catch one of Angelo's kicks and drop him with two hard counter punches. He would quickly find his way back to his feet but while clinched against the fence, and Angelo tried to call a timeout. Silva stopped his offense and then the confused ref seemed to grant him a break, albeit completely against the rules, and signaled a timeout to the cage side officials. Angelo paces around the ring looking dejected and shaking his head while the ref is then trying to get his attention and either understand what's going on or restart the fight. Angelo decides to exit stage left. When he unsuccessfully attempts to open the locked cage door, he climbs the cage and hops to the floor and proceeds to walk down to the loud chorus of boos from the audience. A year later, he would rematch Silver and actually stay in the cage long enough to earn a victory the next time. While he currently enjoys a five fight winning streak, this might be the thing that he's probably most remembered for in the sport. Number eight, Gray Maynard, tough five finale. Before Gray Maynard was known as the elite lightweight who was just a stone's throw away from defeating Frankie Edgar twice, and taking the title, Maynard was a highly regarded prospect who nearly made it to the Ultimate Fight of Five Finals. While he was dropped in his semi-final fight to eventual season winner Nate Diaz, Maynard was booked on the same finale show versus his Team BJ Penn partner Rob Emerson. When the fight begun, Maynard was largely in control, dominating the position battles and landing some power shots that easily won the first round for the Michigan State All-American. And Emerson, well, he suffered a rib injury and was clearly compromised going into the next round. Maynard took advantage and completed a hard takedown on his opponent that forced him to tap due to that rib injury. Great debut for Maynard, right? Well, not exactly. The bully knocked himself out by landing on his own head during that takedown. Embarrassing enough, right? Well, it gets worse. Maynard fully expected to be declared the winner as it appeared Steve Mazzagardi didn't notice how severely he was hurt. And when Bruce Buffer read a non-contest result, Maynard was furious and wanted to protest to Joe Rogan. The embarrassing part is that Rogan grilled the man with the help of instant replay. As Maynard insisted he was fully aware of what was going on at that moment, Rogan kept referring to the recording and shutting down his argument. He tapped, but you were unconscious. You knocked yourself out in the takedown. Look at look at the replay. You're cold, totally unconscious. Look at the replay, bro. Bro, look at the replay. To add more salt to the wound, the audience was audibly laughing every time the moment was replayed, 
and Rogan denied Maynard any wiggle room. Number seven, Jason Solomon, Super Fight League 43, Capital Collision. Jason Solomon was on fire heading into Super Fight League 43, boasting a four and zero record consisting of all knockouts and the Delhi Don had his eyes set on continuing his winning ways. With his first main event taking place just an hour's drive from his hometown of New Delhi, Solomon wanted to do nothing more than put on a show for those in attendance and he certainly accomplished that feat as a fighter rapper when he walked out to the cage with one of his own songs specifically made for that bout. Flanked by an entourage of teammates and two ring girls, Solomon proudly strutted towards the cage. And along the way, he was sure to greet the women in attendance and sing along to his own rap skills. Upon getting in the cage, Solomon opted to grab the top of the fence and swing on the door. He continued speaking to members of the audience before walking upon behind his opponent, Amatesh Chorby, trying to intimidate him. Chorby ignored him and stayed focused, and the Delhi Don's crowd-pleasing walkout lasted far longer than the actual fight as Chorby KO'd him in just nine seconds. Oh, he's hurt, he's hurt, he's hurt, he's hurt, he's, hurt. he's out! As is typical the case these days, the clip went viral. And although as of this recording, Solomon has only seen the win column since that night, this is by far what he's most known for in the sport. Number six, Toshikatsu Harada, Grashen 4. Remember when we said we'd revisit cage celebrations? Well, meet Toshikatsu Harada. When he was scheduled to meet Akihiro Hara at Grashen 4, it wasn't exactly earth shattering news. With both men sporting losing records in an obscure promotion, this fight otherwise would have flown well under the radar of the average fan. However, the moments after Harada's quick TKO victory over Hara is what puts this on the map. Where Darren Caldwell was able to execute a good backflip, but that pesky cameraman doing her job interfered with his victory party, Toshi didn't exactly need any assistance in his failure. His attempt to flip off the cage led to a slip that caused him to land flat on his back. A stunned Harada was left to wither in pain on the floor, wincing his face. Despite just having been finished with punches, Hara quickly recovered and was seen moving around the cage without any issues while the winner was still on the floor. The cornerman can be seen outside of the fence laughing at him. Additionally, the officials barely paid Toshi any mind as they just walked around him and prepared for the announcement. When he finally was able to rise to his feet, it was clear that Toshi was still hurt as he was holding his back and still had the look of agony on his face. When he tried to raise his arms in triumph, the pain overcame him as he went back to his slouch stance until composing himself enough to pose for an awkward victory photo. Number five, Joe Harding, British Challenge MMA 18. There's a time and place for dancing and at British Challenge MMA 18, Joe Harding learned the hard way that the cage is not one of those places. It was at this event that he fought fellow amateur fighter Johan Sagas. Harding was defending his featherweight title and feeling particularly confident that night. And it appeared that his confidence was well founded, as Harding just seemed to have his way with the Frenchman. After opening the fight with a front kick to the face and stuffing a takedown against the fence, Harding felt sure that he was going home with the win. This is where the fun began as he landed the shot and looked to the crowd. And Sagas, he would miss with a kick and Harding would taunt him with a dance. Harding then placed his hands behind his back, opted to land a sparring amount of strikes and overall attempt to embarrass his opponent. He even committed the cardinal sin of using a glove touch to set up an attack. You cheeky man. Going into the third round, Sagas had enough of the games when Harding attempted a fancy wind up before throwing a straight punch from the opposite hand. He decided an arm wave would be best despite the punch missing and Sagas being well within range to retaliate, picked his moment to attack. Before the self-assured champion finished his move, Sagas landed a hard switch kick to the head, sending Harding crashing to the floor. And for good measure and a bit of karma, a few more ground and pound punches landed before the ref could stop the contest. And this clip has gone viral with millions of views since it took place in February of 2017. Number four, David Gardner, Dream 7. Anyone staring across a ring or cage at Shinya Aoki better take things as seriously as possible. Whilst his crossover attempts into North American MMA have not gone well so far, he has been a mainstay in Japan with a stellar resume of mind-bending submissions. There's a good chance you'll get humiliated against him while focused and serious. Just ask Eddie Alvarez, Antonio McKee, and Mizuto Hirota who got his classy and respectful treatment. So when David Gardner found himself being backpacked by Aoki at Dream 7, it was likely that he was just moments away from tapping out like many men before and after him. Instead of focusing on the clear threat and working his way out of the submission, Gardner decided it would be a good time to greet the crowd at Tokyo's famed Saitama Super Arena and stopped hand fighting to wave to the audience while saying, Hello, Japan. Oh, oh no. Sensei. 
something. Oh, he is in trouble. Oh, you Going see? Going for the rear naked choke. Oh, that is, oh my God, that is so dumb. In. So dumb. Despite the merciless opportunist that he is, Aoki immediately locked in the rear naked choke and forced the oddly friended journeyman to tap out in seconds. As if it wasn't embarrassing enough, the moment defined his career as his salutations for Japan have become his nickname. Number 3. Victor Kachigan Fight Nights Global 67 When Russian featherweight Victor Kachigan was booked to fight fellow countryman Ruslan Yamabeyev at Fight Nights Global 67, the matchup on paper seemed pretty obvious. Kachigan was on a two fight win streak while Yamabeyev had suffered three consecutive losses, with the last two being stoppages. Yamabev was also far less experienced. So when they met, Kachigan was 12 and 4, while Yamabev was a mere 2, 5 and 1. Additionally, Victor's older brother Kyorge just won the promotion's welterweight title a week before. However, things didn't go to plan. While establishing some solid ground strikes towards the end of the first round, Kachigan's mother was seen right outside the fence furiously yelling instructions at her son. His mother, Anna Avloskaya, also happens to double as his trainer and is known as the Lion of Pitagorst. She's just as fierce as the name sounds. This would show soon after Kachigan was thoroughly dominated in the second round, forcing the referee to call a TKO halfway into the frame. As her bloodied and badly beaten son laid on the cage floor, Avloskaya went from helping clean his wounds to berating him for not standing up. This was followed by repeated slaps to the face while she yelled at him. A dejected Chichigan got up and despite the protests of his mother, left the cage before the official announcement was read. And to make matters worse, his mother stood in for him. Getting defeated by somebody you were supposed to be and the family pressure being displayed for the world to watch was certainly an embarrassing day for Kachigan. Number 2. Jesse Reasoner KOP57 Sometimes the most embarrassing things are the most natural. An ill-timed bodily function is one to find yourself immortalized in MMA history. Unfortunately for Jesse Reasoner, this is his ticket to our memories. The Michigan native fought Sean Needham in the opening bout of Knockout Promotions 57. Reasoner starts the fight off doing very well against the debuting Needham, landing head kicks and even dropping his opponent in the opening frame. It looked Reasoner was going to take advantage of his experience and find himself in the win column. Repeated punch combinations landed as Needham backed up and looked winded, unable to answer back aside from winging wild overhands. The second round is much of the same as Needham once again struggled to reset, even turning his back to his opponent in the process while taking multiple strikes. At this point, when Reasoner had his chance to secure the win, he suddenly stopped, and just as he attempted to re-engage, he backed up again and suddenly began vomiting, and he walked towards his corner still spewing something as the ref waved it off. What was looking like a dominant victory that would have flown well, well under the radar of the plethora of sloppy regional fights became a bizarre loss that unintentionally made news in the MMA world for all the wrong reasons. At number one, Travis Wolford, Ruckus in the Cage. Fair warning, this one is pretty nasty. The physical demands and stress of a fight can lead to some involuntary responses from the body. And we've seen this happen as well. Waste products have left the body at unfortunate times. When Yoel Romero defeated Derek Brunson at UFC Fight Night 35, his purple shorts mysteriously developed a brown spot. And at UFC Fight Night 112, Justin Kitch left an interesting trail on the cage floor. During her decision loss to Florice Herrick, Tim Sylvia, Kevin Randleman, the list goes on. Unfortunately for unheralded amateur fighters, to Travis Wolford, his intestinal issues proved to be the worst. At Ruckers in the Cage, which is just the most ridiculous event name in Beckley, West Virginia, Wolford found himself being ground and pounded by Daniel Cooper. Cooper went in for a guillotine choke while pulling guard, and when Wolford rolled over while tapping out, an obvious stain was visible on the rear of his trunks. When he stood up, it continued to pour out, running down his leg and piling in spots on the cage floor. Wolford immediately left the cage to the laughter and disgusted jeers of the crowd, and with over 50 million views, this moment has lived on. Thankfully, Wolford has taken it all in his stride, nicknaming himself the Brown Bomber. He admitted to attending a chili festival after weighing in, and the food not agreeing with him after taking several body shots. He jokingly claimed that if he saws himself in the cage again, he'd force his opponent to fight through it, and that he would eat chili before his next fight as well. Wolford also also got an unexpected message of encouragement from Tim Sylvia since he could relate to the ordeal. He actually messaged me and told me that it's just one of those things that happens. 
Thanks for watching that video. Please do like and subscribe. We upload three jaw-droppingly juicy MMA videos a week to get your teeth into, and let us know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you so much to Anthony Walker who wrote this hilarious list. It was awesome to get to voice this one. You can follow him at Ant Walker. And thanks so much to Max Randall who took the time to really carefully edit in the poop bit to this list. You can follow him at Max underscore Randall. Make sure to follow us at On Point MMA and Tom A. Ransom on Twitter, and you make sure you have a great day in the UFC in 2011 and fighting in organizations like the WEC prior to that, Dustin Poirier has consistently been near title contention at both featherweight and now lightweight, perpetually just a win or two away from achieving his dream of becoming world champion. However, wherever Poirier has been, some of the biggest names in the sport have also emerged.